There's one more story in the mix of this day. Reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Then they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, With him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are are one of them. But Peter said, I am not. Then about an hour later, yet another kept insisting, surely this man was with him also, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him before the cock crows today. And wept bitterly. It was their last night together, and Jesus had said to his friends, one of you will betray me. No, said Peter, though all the rest may fail you and flee, I will never desert you. Then Jesus was arrested and taken away into that long night, and as dawn was breaking, the cock crowed. What Peter would never do was done. He went out and wept bitterly, and I cry with him, because I know I've done it too. I have a lot of sympathy for Peter. He wasn't exactly cowering in a closet. He followed at a distance, but he did follow. He did not abandon Jesus or run away, at least not at first. He came right up and sat down in the light of the fire where the truth was on trial, where people might recognize him and ask, are you one? Are you one of them? I've often wondered how I have answered that question in those circumstances, how would you answer? Yeah, sure, I am one of them, one of his followers. Is there an extra cross available? (laughs) Wouldn't you have played for time, held out for some chance to do more than just here. The hard thing about the truth is that it calls us to engagement, to presence, to encounter, to relationship, to vulnerability. The truth can be dangerous. Sometimes, even when it wouldn't be that hard, I just don't want to be vulnerable. You know, depending on the circumstances, when people ask me what my work is, I say, program officer with a not-for-profit corporation. (laughs) And that's not a lie. I am a program officer with a not-for-profit corporation. (laughs) But, (laughs) right. But I say that to direct people away from the full truth, that I am a follower of Jesus Christ, a pastor and teacher of Christ's church who needs time and space like everybody else, 
who has good days and not so good days like everybody else, and on this day does not want to spend the next four hours of a flight from Chicago to Los Angeles processing the gripes, griefs, platitudes, and prejudices of your religious experience just because you happen to be in the seat next to me and I can't. I want a glass of gin and a nap. The truth that calls us to engagement, encounter, to relationship, vulnerability, the truth was on trial. And I think we can understand Peter's reluctance. Are you one? One of them. Are you ready here and now to risk and claim your truth in a world of lies that has falsely labeled you or is ready to kill you for your deviance or at least to hurt you pretty bad? No, he said three times. And then the cock crowed. And Jesus turned to look at Peter, and in the echo of his denials, Peter left, weeping bitterly. For in denying the truth, he had betrayed the best of who he was, the best of everything he believed and hoped. But something changed. As we move forward in the book of Acts and its story of the early church, we see in Peter a very different resolve to affirm the truth, to tell the truth, to be the truth of God's good news in Jesus Christ. The politically expedient escape was offered. Well, you're doing good work. That much is undeniable, but let's leave Jesus out of it. Because you're telling that story stirs up the people and rubs Rome the wrong way. But Peter and John answered boldly, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. At last, Peter had a truth he could not deny a truth for which he would take the risk, a truth in which he had regained his life. What changed? National Coming Out Day is an annual occasion when lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people are encouraged to bear witness, to be open and affirming of their dignity and their place in community and their contributions to our shared life. Every year on October 11th or in churches on the closest Sunday, National Coming Out Day commemorates a very powerful moment in the movement for human rights when half a million people participated in the second march on Washington for lesbian and gay rights and the Names Project AIDS Memorial Quilt was first displayed on the Capitol Mall. And part of why I always remember the date is because I was there on a magnificent Sunday, very much like this one, October 11th, 1987. There had been demonstrations and marches for gay rights before, but never one like that. Never before that big, broadly or powerful. I had participated in demonstrations and marches before, but never in Washington. And never before in the affirmation of the civil rights of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. Never before in publicly political assertion of my own integrity and dignity as a gay man. It had been so different for me up to that moment. I'd had such a different understanding of the politics of coming out, much more by the problems. 
I wasn't exactly cowering in a closet. I had a partner. We lived together and had quite a public life. Our home was a hub of community. But when it came to the political labeling of our sexuality, we avoided it. We lived in a way that begged the question, but then when the question was asked, refused to answer it in categorical terms. Because in my and still in the church very much in those days, if you were categorically gay, you didn't get to be anything else. So what changed? What moved me from the politics of clever avoidance to the ministry of openness and affirmation? What changed for Peter and for me is that someone I loved died in my silence. A lot of people died. And we finally realized our truth and our, our dignity and our faith, our lives and our trust in the author of life, we finally realized that these are not purely personal possessions to be held. The decimation of a generation finally dragged me into the reality that there were people dying of fear dying of shame, dying of secrets, dying for want of the truth that God loved them and claimed them and they were precious in God's sight. I finally came to see that the world around me and with me and within me was dying for bold proclamation of a truth that I knew but did not say out loud and proud. Their lives their love and their loss, called me into the courage of my convictions and boldness in witness to the truth that I am a Christian. I am wonderfully made and gay as a goose, kin to all God's children, endowed with sacred worth and deserving of fully human rights. There are people all around the world and very near at hand, queer and questioning in all sorts of ways, gay and straight, old and young, rich and poor, and all colors, beat up and broken in more ways than we can count. Dying for word of a truth that we know It's not the roles we play or the masks we hide behind that move us to justice and joy. Our peace is found through the simple integrity of our true selves. Children of God, living in trust that God is love, that God made us in love, and that God made us for loving. That's the route to justice and joy for all people. The way of Jesus Christ, pioneer and perfecter of our faith, a truth we are called to boldly proclaim the realization and sharing of our best self with the courage in that faith to face anything, anything. Are you one? Are you one of them? Well then, come out. Come out to your best self, to the glory of God. And this day and always, May your giving be in that spirit.